I wouldn't comment on a player on another team, um, you know, just would be inappropriate for me to do and against league rules. So I uh, understand the, the interest in that, and I've seen all the headlines that are being written out there, but wouldn't comment on that. What's your, what's your schedule with the We've had good discussions with Terrell himself through the offseason. He and I have spoken a number of times. He and you have spoken. We do have some meetings set up with uh, his representatives, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, we're still uh, looking forward to, to working towards finding some middle ground with Terrell to bring him back and have him as a Cleveland Brown for a long time. Sashi, can you definitively say you won't uh, put a tag on him? Before the I wouldn't get into that now. Here, Nate. Thanks, sir. So actually, what you, uh... Uh, well, Crow's under contract, obviously, through the RFA tag, and we'll work to see if we can find a longer-term deal for him. Um, and right now, uh, you know, I think as he plays through the season, this offseason, through the tag, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see how that plays out. Sashi, so there's a report that uh, Josh Gordon has applied for reinstatement again. Where are the where do the Browns stand with Josh Gordon? Yeah, I saw the reports. Frankly, uh, you know, I just don't know enough, Jeff, at this point about what that process would look like. I do understand that he's able to, to reapply uh, at some point here in March. And as I understand more, I might be able to shed more light right now. It'd just be premature for me to, to respond to that. Could you give us a state of the quarterback position and what are your options going forward? Yeah, so we're always going to look to uh, you know, invest in that position. Uh, I think we've got three young guys on the roster between Robert, Cody, and Kevin uh, that we're excited to have back. Moved on from Josh, obviously, this offseason. Uh, but we will always look, uh, Tony, to, to add to that position. We think there's some guys in the draft that are intriguing for us. Uh, there could be some guys in free agency, depending on how things shakes out, shake out, that, that will help us too. Sasha, without getting into the specifics regarding the talks with Terrell, do you feel some inherent pressure, though, to get something done before March 7th so he doesn't even hit the open market? Uh, I wouldn't look. We don't look at it that way, to be honest. I think we'd like to have Terrell back, um, and that's a priority for us. That said, we're, we're not going to panic if he's not back also. Uh, but he's a good player, uh, worked hard. We think he fits within our system, had a lot of success here with our coaches. Uh, so we think this is a great place for him to continue his career. I appreciated his remarks, you know, with the, with the press about wanting to stay in Cleveland. Uh, and then it's on us, you know, in this process here to try to make sure we can we can exhaust all options to make that happen. Do you have a deadline coming up with uh, Robert Griffin on March 11th. Do you know what you're going to do with that? Or is that to be determined? Uh, that would be something we wouldn't talk about in this forum. Um, we've had a lot of discussions, as you can imagine, about that. Uh, we haven't made a final decision there one way or the other, but we expect Robert to be back in here uh, come April when the guys come back. You said if you don't use a tag on Terrell by 4 o'clock, um, would you be worried that he would get to the market? And what would be the reason not to at least ensure that he comes back next year? Yeah, I think the, the reality at this point is that if you're not going to use a tag on the guy, the guys are effectively in free agency. and. Um, you know, they'll be solicited by, by other teams, you know, through through the week here in Indy. But we're realistic about that and understand that piece of it. But uh, we'll work through the process with Terrell and his, his representatives. As I said, he's a priority. We won't be panicked if, if uh, you know, things don't work out and he's not on our roster. We just don't feel it's worth using the tag. Uh, I wouldn't characterize it that way. I think we want to have him here as long term um, as opposed to kind of a one year temporary option. Uh, and I think Terrell's and uh, my conversations, he understands where we are with, with respect to him. We value him a lot. When you say you expect Robert there in uh, April, that would indicate you expect to pay him as roster uh, I wouldn't go that far, you know, Pat. I just wouldn't comment much more on it now. We haven't made a decision one way or the other whether or not uh, he's going to be on our roster moving forward. Uh, but he is on our roster today. Looking back at the guys last year, and seeing the rookie season that Carson Wentz had, would you do the same deal that you did last year? You know, seeing how everything played out. Yeah, we we do like the trade, um, and it positioned us so in understanding where we were as a roster understanding that we we're passing on you know an opportunity to take a player to whether it's Bosa or Wentz or have you and you tip your hat to Carson I think he came in and played well for Philadelphia and seems to be a quarterback with with a, a high upside I think this is a trade that probably when we look back at will work out for both teams 
uh, but it allowed us to be in the position today where we have two ones, two twos, uh, had two threes uh, this year as well. Um, and so we, we do like to trade for our side. Uh, and I think time will tell how all these young guys that came out of that trade or somehow tied to that uh, will develop in the league. I'm not asking you to comment on Garoppolo, but would you still consider pursuing it as, as, as a part of your upgrading your position? Are you ruling out researching the possibility? I wouldn't. I wouldn't comment on that in this form would be inappropriate and against league rules. How many relations did you said to trade Patriots last year? Sure. How would you describe the relationship with Bill Belichick? Uh, good. I think they're easy to work with, um, and uh, I would describe it as good. Leave it at that. Sashi, can you characterize how active or not active you anticipate being in free agency this year with all the cap room you have? Uh, yeah, I think for us, we're going to look at every opportunity, including free agency, to improve our team. Obviously, Ned, as you know, we've talked to this a lot. The lifeblood of what we need to build is, is essential that we, we – have better results in the draft, and that's going to be the foundation of what we do. It will not be exclusive to uh, using picks to trade for players or looking at free agents that we feel like can add add value to us. Uh, so we'll explore what opportunities are out there. You know, when when uh, opportunity arises on March seventh, eighth, ninth, uh, and then I, that's how I would leave it. I think a lot of that gets dictated by the market. Sasha, without discussing players that are under control with other teams, but. So many quarterbacks that are out there that have been tied to the Browns and whatnot. That this is a backdoor Garoppolo <laughs> question. This is what you're asking. <laughs> it might be, but yeah, okay. uh, how does that? How does the? How do these situations those complicate your preparations and evaluations for the draft and the quarterbacks that are available? I think because chronologically they're just so, you know separated i think we'll we'll have a pretty good idea of what's available in free agency and we'll have you know a plenty of time to adjust you know and understand what's available in the draft i think the key for us is we really do view the off season as a continuum of opportunities and so we go into really the senior bowl hoping to have a great understanding of where we are uh, in each of those phases and the opportunities particularly at quarterback because it's a point of emphasis for us uh, you know as we try to establish and find our starting quarterback for a long term. How are you talking about free agent quarterbacks? Is Brian Hoyer an option or is there too much water under the bridge? I wouldn't talk again about uh, another guy that's that's not a free agent at this point. Pat. Is there any way you could imagine going into next season without Another quarter, another, uh, with, with the three guys you have. Yes. Why, do, why would you think? Why would you think that would be good? So that's that could be the reality that we're faced with. Uh, so it's something that you have to prepare for. Um, doesn't mean that it's an aiming point or a target. And I'd leave it at that. But we do like Kevin, Cody, and the, the work they put in. And Roberts come in and obviously had a tough year with the durability and the injury early. Um, but the reality is those are three guys on our roster uh, and we'll continue to develop and work with them. Uh, doesn't mean that's necessarily our aiming point. Uh, we want one of those guys to develop and establish themselves as a good quality long-term starter for us that can win a lot of games. Uh, but I think each of them would have a way to go to establish themselves that way. doesn't mean that you give up on them. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's an intriguing prospect always each year. You know, you know, there's years uh, where where I think the group of people or the consensus is it's a strong quarterback class, and sometimes those don't pan out. And there's other years where there's a guy who shows up Dak last year. You know, who would have sat here this year and said that's the guy that needs to be the top five pick? Uh, so the reality you have to go in with enough humility and then also diligence to understand what each prospect provides uh, and then put him in uh, your system or at least project him into your system to see how he's going to be able to perform for you. Senior Bowl was a great opportunity for our coaches and our personnel folks to get a better look at some of the prospects coming out and we'll continue to do work on some of the underclassmen as well. He was pretty, uh, he was pretty strong about Josh last year saying the team was ready to move on. If he got reinstated, have you guys softened that stance at all? Would you be willing to consider that? We haven't, and we've really been focused, Scott, to be honest, until we saw some of the reports recently on the guys that are on the roster. You know, on occasion, I would check in with Josh and he would just personally because uh, we care for the young man. But beyond that, we really haven't sat down to talk about what it would be like if he gets back in or, or even 
you know, taking the time to understand exactly what that would look like. And I think that's, you know, a pretty complicated process at this point, given kind of his history. So it would be largely speculative at best. Uh, and, and we've got a lot of guys to focus our attention on. You talked about creating mixed four players. The fact that you would have them as not a cost-controlled option for the less years, does that make your decision? I missed the central part of your question. It's like the fact that you would create mixed four players. The fact that you wouldn't have them cost-controlled for as many years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, I wouldn't call it necessarily a deterrent. You just factor that into the valuation. So I don't think anybody thinks Jamie Collins is a third round talent. It's just when you look at kind of the number of years under control uh, under his contract, what you're trading for, how long you may or may not have him on your roster, certainly factors into some of the discussions you have with other teams. Uh, but for us, I mean, we want to emphasize guys who are, you know, kind of entering their primes or in their primes or younger, uh, just because where we are as we build our roster. Are you willing to be able to have yeah, no, and then and obviously you have a, a chance to extend them and want to understand your chances at doing that as well. But we, we really like the Collins trade. I think it worked well for New England, worked well for us. What, what have you learned about Jamie Collins and why is he someone you want to build around? Uh, you know, really talented player, passionate about football, um, high football intelligence, uh, and, and incredibly athletic. So we like all those things. Uh, fit within our building, uh, fit with our coaches. He and you, I think, have a, 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 gr a good and growing relationship. Uh, so we, we liked everything we saw about him. And he played well, you know, adjusting to a new system, came in, and I don't know how many tackles he averaged, but he was one of our, our I think, our second leading tackles for the remainder of the season. When you see a player that New England is willing to give up, does that give you pause? No, no, because I think you've seen in time that they've acquired and, and let go of players for a variety of reasons. But, um, you know, you have to make your own individual evaluations and trust those. And we felt good about Jamie and still do. Yeah, the way we look at it is competition, uh, but we absolutely do value veteran presence. Uh, you know, I think well documented. We kept around uh, last year some of the veterans in terms of Josh and uh, Josh McCown and uh, you know Tremont and some of those guys that aren't going to be here this year. And some of our young guys are going to have to step up. Uh, but we we charged them with that as soon as they came in the door. Uh, this is not time to take a redshirt year. When you come in and you're you're drafted by us, you're brought in as a CFA. Uh, our, your time is now, and the clock starts ticking from a leadership perspective and, a, and, and on the field as well. Would you be open to uh, trading the number one pick? Uh, you know, we're, we're going to, I think, responsibly listen to any opportunities that are out there. I think we have to do that. It's not a design of ours. Uh, we would have to wait to see what, what might come and what player might be available there as we get through this process here, Tony. Sash? Yeah, I think Corey, you know, had had two separate injuries during the year that that limited him. But uh, we like the competitiveness, the athleticism, and as he's going to develop, we understood that coming out of Baylor and coming to the league, that it's going to take him some time to get to full maturity. Uh, but I think you can see the speed, the competitiveness, the ability to make some big plays, um, and the strength in him. Uh, and he's a young player that I think will be good for us for a long time. You know, you project out what his production would have been over the course of the season he would have had without the injuries. He would have had a good rookie year and on, on his way. Way to a good second year. We expect that from him this year. What do you see Two more questions here. here. Uh, good player. <laughs> hey, Sasha. <laughs> the number of you have, do you um, I, I think it uh, provides both. You know, I think it provides us a lot of flexibility in terms of how we build the roster. It could be packaging together, move up to uh, get a player we covet and target. Could be, you know, uh, again, acquiring a player from another roster. Uh, so it gives you a lot of flexibility as we move forward. Uh, you know, kind of our worst case scenario, we have a, a bevy of young, talented players that, that we frankly need uh, to, to build our foundation and, and move on towards winning. Sashi, uh, Miles My, Garrett and uh, Deshaun Watson, uh, they obviously, you know, playfully said they want the Cowboys to trade with you guys so they can play for the Cowboys, and Deshaun kind of poked fun at the Browns a little bit. What, what was your reaction to that? Will you talk to those guys about it, and will it in any way affect your decision about whether to draft those guys? I don't think you can take some of this stuff too serious. Listen, we're, we're rea realistic about where we are as a brand and a roster, but more importantly, I think you know these are young men who are um, you know eager to play in the in the NFL. 
Uh, they they want to go different places, perhaps, but I think more importantly for, for them, you just can't take it too seriously. Obviously, it's been well documented and explained. Uh, some of the representatives of, of the players call up to explain some of the comments, and, and I explained to those guys at the time, you know, we don't take it too seriously. We look forward to having an opportunity to meet them. Uh, they're both high character young men and move forward, you know, manage yourself with class and, and go from there. I think there's some lessons all around to be learned. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.